Hi, um, I'm Andy and I'm with here. I'm with Maria here. Um, maybe I'll just start that again. Because <laughs> Uh, I'm Andy and uh, I'm with Maria and in this video we're going to look at how GraphX might be used as a HR tool when working with employees data. Yeah, so specifically how prediction models built into GraphX can be used to cluster employees, identify sub-communities and understand the defining behavior, characteristics or preferences of these groups. So we are going to be working with a popular HR data set published on Kaggle that contains almost 15,000 employees of a fictional company alongside with information about their salaries, working hours, satisfaction levels, and more important, uh, whether they have left the company or not. Exactly. So in this project, we want to build a model that predicts whether the employee has left the company or not, based on the values that they have for every other variable in the data set. So we're going to be focusing on uh, this variable left. And I'm just going to click to add the model, um, use the wizard. We're going to uh, select train and predict. And I want to find this variable left, add it as a target. And then considering that we're going to use all of the other variables to try and predict whether the employee has left the company or not, I'm going to use all of these other variables and add them as factors in our model. So uh, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> Apart from we want to pay particular attention to um, this question here under the network and clusters tab. So do you want to use target variable as a UMAP target? Making sure that this is this says yes helps to ensure the clusters appear on the graph are defined by the model's prediction on whether they have left the, the company as well as the characteristics that they have in the data set. And this should leave us with a nice distinction between those employees who's left and those that did not. Uh, and hopefully this will allow us to recognize some sub communities more easily. So with that selected as yes and our target and factors added, we can click continue and name our project something like uh, predicting employee behavior. And clicking execute is going to build the model and uh, load up something that looks quite like this. So the first thing we notice is uh, that we have um, two colors on, on, the, on the graph, really. Um, the the color mapping is is set to prediction, so the variable um, that our model created uh, as to whether the employees have left the company or not. If the model predicted that the employees had left the company, um, the nodes are colored orange to represent this, and the blue cluster uh, right in the middle of the day set are employees where our model has considered that these employees stayed in the company. So let's quickly compare to uh, the actual value for left to see how our model did. And the color mapping reveals that it's, it's done quite well. Um, we can check this using the error um, variable and the confusion matrix variable over on the left sidebar. And if we select uh, the errors where our, our, our model mistakenly identified whether the, the employee had left the company or not, we can see that these are quite clustered towards the center of the graph. So this kind of makes me think that um, these characteristics are employees that did leave the company, but the model wasn't able to recognize this because they had very similar characteristics to those that actually stayed in the company. Yeah, so um, as Andy mentioned, we can start to filter using the left target variable, and we start to get a better picture on how employees have been clustered in our graph. It looks like we have one large community of employees that did not leave and three communities of employees that did leave. The three communities of employees that left have been grouped separately. We can create segmentations of these communities, allowing us to start comparing them a little bit more precisely. We can filter using the direct selection tool or by using the variable charts within our project sidebars, then add our selection to a segment within our segmentation. This gives us a variable neatly dividing our employees into the four communities we see on the graph. The result is the new segmentation that we have here, communities. Let's label the regions in, of our graph 
with their community and start comparing what characteristics distinguish our three sub-communities of employees that left the company. They must have different ones. We can start to use the decide by the variables to get an idea on how they're different. Exactly. Um, so it looks quite neat here um, with the communities used as region labels and color mapping. And a really useful feature that we can have to start getting an immediate visual representation of how these communities, so we want to be focusing on the uh, communities of employees that have left the company, uh, we can use side mapping to get an immediate visual re representation of how they're different. So satisfaction level, if I click this little icon here, representing size mapping, uh, we can immediately see that the graph changes. So larger nodes, um, data points that have been uh, given a, a bigger circle, are employees that have a higher rating for satisfaction. And employees that have a lower satisfaction rate have been um, reduced in size, so they're much smaller. And immediately we can see that employees in left community one have quite a high satisfaction level, whereas employees in left community two have quite a low satisfaction level. In addition to uh, size mapping, we can also use color mapping. So if I wanted to um, take away the size mapping and just get an, a color representation of how satisfaction level is divided between employees, then we can see that the purple uh, nodes on the graph represent employees with a low satisfaction level and the yellow, um, the higher the range, the more, the more yellow the employees will be. And this is particularly useful if we wanted to apply some size mapping and then perhaps also color mapping. So at the moment I've got size mapping representing the satisfaction level of employees. And then I can also have a look and see um, what the employees average monthly hours were. So we can see that um, left community two employees actually um, were quite unsatisfied with their job and also worked quite a large amount of hours. So this could be a reason why they uh, have left the company. But um, employees in left community one, perhaps less so. I think we need to do a little bit more digging to find out about this. Yeah, definitely. Um, now that we've added a filter to select this community, um, our sidebar chart changes to reveal the values for employees inside of this community. Um, number one, so changing their representation from absolute to relative allow us to explore the charts proportionally. So we can see that employees in this sub community have a higher satisfaction level. They work a high number of hours per month, but not the highest in the data set. And they also spend five or six years in the company. The most important thing here is that it looks like they have quite a low salary. So if we consider that they spend quite long in the company and they work a lot of hours, this school will be a reason why they have left the company. So um, thinking into the consideration that this could be a useful finding, we can save it as an insight. So insights are important features of your analysis that you can save as cards that can uh, then be shared or presented. Yep, so I'm just saving this insight. So this will save the variable chart. Um, alongside this title, employees in left community one have a low salary. And saving that insight uh, is just going to make sure that we have these charts available in the insights panel down here, which is great. And we can just return to the part of the analysis. Yeah, so now let's explore the features of Labs Community 3. So selecting this community changes our variable charts again, and their data reflects all the values for employees in this community. Now, scrolling through the variables charts, we can see that employees in left community three have quite a low satisfaction level. They don't work much. They only spend around three years in the company, and they get paid quite little and work on very few projects. So the fact that they work on few projects could definitely be a reason why they have low satisfaction score. Definitely. So I think um, we've used the variable charts on the sidebars to get a basic understanding of our communities. And a good point in our analysis would be to jump over to the compare panel, which is a great place to look at how uh, communities in our data um, are vary from one another. So the compare panel allows us to compare variables uh, and explore the difference between them. So if I select communities as a variable I want to compare, 
immediately we get some charts representing the community of employees that stayed in the company. Uh, this is the largest community in the data. Uh, but if I add in another value to the charts, then automatically the compare panel is going to generate um, that variable charts that show us the difference between these these values. But I want to compare left community two with every other employee in the data set. So I'm just going to select left community two here, and then also everything. Uh, and this will generate some charts which allow me to compare the difference between employees in left community two and every employee in the data set. So very quickly, I can look through the charts um, that best explain the difference here. And I can see that satisfaction level for left community two employees is really, really low compared to uh, the, the average scores of every other employee in the data set. This is really interesting uh, and could definitely be a reason why they have left the company. In addition, I can see that employees uh, from the whole data set are working uh, less pro less projects than employees in left community two. So it does seem that these employees are, are working on a, a lot more projects and also are experiencing a low satisfaction level. The two definitely could be related. But I'm just gonna move on. And I think it's a good chance to explore um, the differences between left community two, left community one, and left community three. So there's a, a, a fantastic um, feature of GraphX. We can, we can take sub-communities in our data set and we can look at the variables that explain why they are different, which is, is really useful here. So immediately again, we've got satisfaction level as being a huge reason why these employees are different. Uh, in, employees in left community one seem to have quite a high rating for satisfaction level, which is um, something to consider. And um, as we know, employees in left community two have a low satisfaction level. Now, employees in left community one weren't working on that many projects, and uh, they did spend quite a lot of time in the company, which, which leads me to think maybe a hypothesis could be that even after uh, a long amount of time in the company, these employees could be looking to move on, despite the fact that they're quite satisfied in their jobs. I think one really important chart to pay attention to here, uh, because we're comparing all three communities of employees that left the company, is the salary chart. And I think Maria has something interesting to point out here. Yeah, definitely, because the salary chart um, show us that employees in all of the sub communities that left the company have a salary that was below the average for everybody in the data set. So if we're looking for a reason why these communities um, have left the company, this is a pretty good place to start. So um, that's all for now. We've been looking at how prediction models can help identify the reasons why employees left the company, but we could also use this flow to understand the preferences or characteristics of employees. You can take a look at the data set and the project for yourself using the links inside the article.